Hey, it's Sophia Ren, helping you to write and create awe-striking things which you will put into the world and perhaps for some people get some money. If you're an entrepreneur or a writer creator who wants to sell something and you have struggles with that, then this is going to be the video for you. And I just want to preface that I did do a video on sharing your stuff. Um, a couple days ago and I put on YouTube so that is also there as a resource and um, in that video I shared that recently I found out after nine years of working with sensitive people nine years of being an entrepreneur myself as well as a writer a healer a singer and all these things renaissance woman after all of this time I found out that actually having fears around being rejected and having people say no and things like that is actually not just a personality difference that a lot of people have. Um, for some people, this is a major physiological difference that actually people can take medication for now. They've started to um, prescribe uh, blood pressure reducing medications to people with ADHD specifically for sensitivity to rejection. And I'm just finding this out as a sort of new um, things that are going out there. It's not in the DS DSM yet. But it's just to say that if you've ever had fears of selling your stuff, I want you to know it doesn't mean you don't have the chops for this. It doesn't mean you shouldn't keep going. And to the contrary, I think that sometimes, especially for creative people, when we're scared, that is exactly what you need to be doing. Sometimes you get these fears about like your creative work and, and making a risk and putting yourself out there and offering something that you're passionate about. And that's a sign that like you're on the right track. You need to keep going. Um, because sometimes the most fulfilling things in life are freaking terrifying. <laughs> so I want to just put that out there. And I know from experience. Um, and I just want to say a few things that to help you, um, although this is a huge topic. And let me know if you have any questions or struggles in the comments or in messaging me. Because I'd be happy to make more videos and contents on this subject. Um, because I know it's so important. You know, we all have things in our life we want to spend money on and it'd be really great if we could get money from the things we're passionate about from the things that we love doing and have it be a win-win where we're helping people we're getting to live the good life on a beach somewhere and um, people are happy to pay us for things because they see the value of it and they're excited about it so hey there um, yeah so one of the problems that I found over the nine years I've been in business, I've sold so many different kinds of things and I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, including helping them make that jump between not selling something to selling something. And um, and I've seen the process. I've also seen the different hurdles people have when they're already in business, um, helping them at a higher level with their marketing and things like that. So I've seen a lot of things that people go through. I'm tapped into a lot of community of entrepreneurs and we talk, you know, we hear stuff. And and what I've learned are a couple of things. So the first thing is it's kind of easier to sell stuff that you aren't passionate about. I, and I think that that is maybe personal, you know, a difference, not personality, but a difference that some people have. For some people, maybe they need to be really passionate about something to sell something. For other people, the fact that you're passionate about it can make it really, really emotionally difficult to share it because if you get any kind of negative response about it, um, including crickets, including a lack of response, then that's going to be really hurtful. And this is not, um, this is not a conversation where I'm going to say anything negative about people who get hurt by this because I'm one of them because I think that there's something about my physiology that I'm really sensitive to things like that. And I'm coming to accept that about myself and think it's not a matter of therapy. It's not a matter of tools and things. The actual emotional response I have is like a survival instinct. It's like, it's like a bear, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm seeing a bear and I'm just really tuned into those signals of my survival. Okay. So again, this is me saying like, if you've ever experienced that, it's not because you're less than or not cut out for this. Forget that. No. Um, but if you have trouble selling the thing that you really want to sell, it's something that can cause you confusion and overwhelm, and it can cause you to like forget what you're selling. It can just go right out of your head. And it can just um, be something you start for a little while, and then you maybe have some kind of negative thing happen, and then you stop. That's another thing that happens. Sometimes we start selling something we're passionate about, and then either 
nothing happens, there's no sales, or there's a negative person, or something happens that creates a lot of negative feelings for us, and then we stop because it's painful. And that's where I think selling something you are passionate about can almost be more difficult than selling something that you aren't passionate about. For instance, if this is your creation, if this is your writing, if this is your healing modality, if this is your your coaching thing that you, you really care about and that is something you're offering, that's different from you clocking into a job and like selling a toaster or something to someone that like you have no personal attachment to. It is way easier to go into someone else's business and go do this or that than it is to do it in your business if you have emotional attachment to what you're doing. And and there's nothing wrong with that because it's that emotional attachment that is going to bring you back to it. Even when you go through these humps, it, it might lead you to coming back because you're just so passionate about it. You just keep coming back and back. The thing I don't want to see is anyone dropping off. I don't want to see anyone stopping altogether and not coming back to the thing that they're passionate about because of, you know, negative feelings. So I definitely wanted to encourage everyone to like, just consider it almost like a practice of like self appreciation that you have something to share. And, um, I just want to share for me, when I started to get into my business, um, I had a lot of different arms going. I was in school for massage therapy and I really wanted to get into helping people in a deeper way. So I hired a business coach to help me to do something different than massage. Um, and I, I was talking to her about what it was I really wanted to help people with. And I got clear on, you know, I really want to help people with their writing uh, at the time. Um, now I'm a little bit more branched out. Um, but at the time I just wanted to help people with their writing and inspire them. And, um, and then we started to dig into how would I put this on my website and how would I do all this stuff and how would I sell it? And I started to freak out. I started to freak out because I felt like I'm a fraud. I'm not really a writer. Um, at this time I hadn't done anything besides publish online on my own blogs and things. Um, and so I just felt like it wasn't going to be successful because I wasn't enough. Um, I wasn't far enough along. So what's funny is that I ended up not being able to be supported by that coach. They couldn't really help me because they didn't understand the emotional side of things and they didn't understand like traumas or physiology or whatever it was that was causing those feelings for me. So, I mean, they were just telling me like you're being illogical or whatever. Um, and it wasn't helpful. So I ended up like stopping work with them and going on my own way and, and selling other things that I was a little bit less passionate about, still liked a lot, but it wasn't the peak of my passion. I, I kind of found little areas outside. If that area of passion is like a circle, I kind of found things on the edges of the circle, like doing tarot readings and, and other things that were cool, but they weren't my big thing, which is the creative process. Helping people create is really my thing and writing and these amazing things that just come out of nowhere like that, helping people to do that. So, um, yeah, so eventually I did make it back. I did make it back <laughs> and I ended up getting paid to write. And then that made it a lot easier to say that I can help writers because I'm getting paid to write now. So I started writing for businesses. Um, and that's when it really, when I started break through. So I just wanted to say I did eventually make it back there. Um, but even I have been through this. So it's, it's really common and I see other people do it too, where they, there's something that like they're really passionate about, but they just kind of skirt around the edges of it or they don't fully claim it or they don't fully set up a way for people to pay them or they kind of start and then they sort of stop. And it's, it's just important to just acknowledge that like, you know, I'm feeling a lot of things and let me go and try to work with my feelings instead of just focusing on the to do aspect. You know, it's not just about like the left brain checklist the emotional component of things is really important. So big lesson. All right. The second part is that obviously if you are, um, selling something, you have to tell people about it. And that's another place that gets people stopped up. They either don't share that much about it or they share about it in a way that people don't really understand. Um, and that's a huge thing is learning how to talk about what you have to offer, especially if you're a coach or healer or somebody who's doing something kind of ethereal and intangible. If you're selling services, it's not like you're handing someone like this hard pack, but like it's important to try to speak in language people really, really understand about like things that they're going through their own mind 
And once I learned how to do that, I started making a lot more money in my business and I started to, to understand basically what copywriting is, basically what communication is for business. And it's different than you, how you might speak otherwise. It's different from how, if you went to a healing program, how they spoke to you about what you're doing. You have to translate it in a certain way in order to make a sale. And it's not about being sleazy or being scammy. It's just about being practical and making it so they can make the two dots go together. You know, they can, they can have that aha moment. Their eyes can light up and they can be like, Oh wow. Yeah, I can, I really have this problem and you're going to help me with my problem. Oh my God. So once I learned how to do that, things got a lot easier, but it's something I see people do a lot. And I say that people talk about their shovel too much. They talk about the modality that they use to help people, which to me is like a shovel versus their treasure. The treasure you're going to help them find with the shovel. No one cares about the shovel. They just want the treasure. <laughs> they just want to have this sparkly, amazing, brilliant treasure that you have. And for them to be like, ooh, like, yeah. And that is really powerful to focus on more of what you're offering them that way. And again, it kind of goes back to the, the feelings and the confidence because a lot of people back away from that and they just want to talk about their modality. They just want to use the language their teachers told them and be a good student instead of really standing up kind of more powerfully to say, this is what I'm put on the planet here to do is to help you to do this thing. And then once they're paying you, you can tell them all the rest of the stuff. But in marketing and sharing, you have to speak a certain way in order to get through to people. And um, that is huge. And something a lot of people, you can see them online if, if you know you see that people are selling something, but you don't really get why you need to pay that particular person right now anything because it's just not tangible enough. Okay, um, but I will say that thirdly, once I figured out that in my business, um, I still had problems with fears that got in my way. In fact, there was one period where I actually doubled the money that I made. I went from making $800 one month to $1,600 in my business the next month. And, and that was good money, which I know is not like, right, you know, tell everyone on Instagram money. It's not like I made a million dollars money, but for a regular person of my caliber, that was good money to make $1,600 and even $800 to be able to pay bills with stuff I was doing my business was a huge leap forward. And, and this is where I say that I think people can do this. I think this is achievable because I learned how to speak more clearly to people so they understood what I could offer them and why they needed to just jump in now. So I figured out a way to do it. Um, but the fear of rejection didn't go away. In fact, I was telling someone in my family about this this achievement I had and their lukewarm reaction, which I perceived to be negative, actually put me into this emotional spiral that for like six months, I didn't really wanna do anything anymore in my business. I was just so lost. And, um, and that's where like, it's just important to kind of come back to whatever level you're at if you're a sensitive person, if you're a person who has fear that is something that you struggle with, just in things um, is that fear can come even after you're successful and you can have dips and that's really common that people have a big success and then they have a dip because something happened right after that success point so that can create like stops and starts but what I found for myself is that like I said before when I started my business I really wanted to work with writers I want to be part of the creative process I wanted to to do these things that were more um, more spiritual, and um, and I had found a way to, to sell my services, um, and it wasn't anything about how I was selling it, but it was just I moved out of the circle of my zone of genius. I had I've been skirting around the edges, and so when I had that dip after the success point, when I was feeling lost, when I was feeling in like a dark night of the soul, like why am I doing any of this? I realized that I had gone off track of what my real passion was that thing that I was so afraid wasn't going to be successful that thing I didn't want to keep putting out there because I wasn't far enough along that was the thing I was really supposed to be doing and um and that's why I ended up getting a master's in spiritual and pastoral cares because I just really committed to listening to my intuition and doing 
what my intuition was telling me to do, even though it didn't make total sense. And I think that I can go hand in hand for those of you who are business people, who are creators, who are writers, is sometimes you intuitively are led to do something and you don't understand totally why. But if you do follow it, it'll make it easier for you to avoid those moments where you're like, what the hell am I doing? You know, like those moments of what the hell am I doing are either from fear that, you know, is just trying to like confuse you, or it could actually be that your intuition is saying, hey, something is wrong and you're on the wrong track. And discerning the difference between those two things is challenging. And it is kind of the crux of everything I'm on the planet here to do is to help people to figure that out. And, um, and that's why I have like a course with like 35 videos all on how to get clear on what to do next, how to tap into your intuition, your inner mermaid, you know, how to make progress in a way that's aligned with your soul. Cause I don't know any other way to do this <laughs> and I don't know how people do it otherwise, but you know, so I'm just coming to say that if there's something that you feel like you're supposed to put out into the world or you're supposed to put for sale or is something you have a business and you're not entirely sure how to break through so that you're making money doing something you're passionate about, you might have to take a leap of faith in a certain way where you're listening to your intuition, you're listening to your vibes, you're listening to something spiritual that's telling you hey take this step take this step it's like if you ever played zelda there's this character that's like hey listen you know it's like this little part of you that's like listen um following that can help avoid the pitfalls because then at least if you're scared or you're feeling some kind of negative thing you feel like okay well my intuition says i'm going the right path right path okay so screw everything else that's happening because my intuition is telling me to do this and you just don't want to get to a point later where you like look back and you're like damn I did not listen to myself because oh. we've all done that right where we had a feeling or we had something and we didn't listen to ourself and then we like we know that things became so much harder than they needed to be just because we didn't listen to ourselves, and that's where like you know having time where you can connect to your brilliance and your wisdom is like absolutely essential. So although selling your stuff, marketing it, everything, it's about connecting to other people. But at the heart of it all is your connection to yourself and your connection to your intuition to let you know where you need to dig in your business, where you need to, where X marks the spot. You know, if we're talking about treasure and trying to dig up treasure, where is your treasure? Your intuition is going to be part of that navigation to the right spot to say, this is where I need to start. This is what I need to put out there. This is what I need to sell. And sometimes you just have to keep going even when you're getting negative responses. It could be 10 no's before you hear a yes. But if you're in the right spot and you have things to support you to stay connected to your spirituality, to your intuition, to take good care of yourself, that's going to help you to not move before you hit pay dirt, to not move before you hit the treasure that is for you to claim and offer to other people in your business to make money, but help people at the same time. It's a thing. It happens. And it's not just for people who are making a million dollars that are like one in a thousand. It's for regular people too. So um, to have the strength to surrender to actually stepping into my zone and putting it out there, even when I have uncertainties and doubts, but my intuition is saying, yes, yes, yes. That strength is not about being in control, is about surrendering to something else, something bigger. And that ultimately is what drives me. I don't do business like a lot of people teach because it just doesn't resonate with me. And I think you got to do what resonates with you and experiment. And with that experiment, see what happens. But sometimes even if the result is initially negative or something, Sometimes you're still going in the right direction. So you always have to go back to your heart, your intuition, what's right for you, and make that the boss. Make that the boss of your life <laughs> because it should be. And no one else is going to like, like, I don't know, like until you call yourself the boss, other people are not going to call you that. You know what I mean? Like it's something you have to claim and just decide that my intuition is the boss, the boss. So yeah, so um, thank you guys so much to, I'm in love with the movements in my hand. <laughs> yeah, my friend tells me um, I'm part Italian, so I have like that like, like hand gesture thing. Um, I, I'm 
so so passionate about this, you guys, because lately my intuition has been telling me that I need to talk more about helping people with um, with their business, helping them put make their heart the boss, make the their heart and their passion and their zone of genius the center of what they're doing. And if you've been holding back from putting that out there or you've put it out there and it hasn't succeeded in the past and you're feeling really discouraged, it could be a good time to get somebody else on your team. Um, things that I have done range from making sales pages for people, scripting videos for them, doing entire launches for them, but it doesn't need to be that complicated. Sometimes making a sale is as simple as deciding, what am I gonna put on my website? Where's the pay button? What am I What am I gonna say in this conversation? What am I gonna put on the sign? And taking the actions that are right for you that might not be the same thing as somebody else is doing. You just gotta find where your intuition is living in the moment. And yeah, so if you are an entrepreneur or a writer or a coach and you want to get more people to pay you to do the thing that you're really passionate about and you wanna get some help, um, I'm offering something starting really soon. So if you're interested, you can reach out now. And it's for you if you wanna increase your sales or charge more for what you're doing so that way you can go live on a beach somewhere or live the good life but help people at the same time and if you want to do what you're really passionate about. Um, I think it's time for everybody to break through the limits of what they're offering and don't let fear hold you back and I'm not saying that because your fear is um, there's anything wrong with you for feeling fear but we have to find some way to move through it and to move beyond it and to keep going. Um, because sometimes the fear is exactly in the place where we need to dive. <laughs> so break through the li limits and go for what you're really passionate about. If you're not clear on it, I can help you get clear on that. If you're not clear on how, I can help you figure out what to do next. Um, and then you'll get people who are more understanding of what it is that you do, where their eyes are going to light up and be like, ooh, wow, I love that. I get it. I get what you're offering me. And I'm excited to sign up with you. I'm excited to have you be my mentor, have you be in my life. Um, and even if you are a writer or doing something for free, you still have to get people excited about it to continue to dive into what you have to teach, to, to really engage with you on the deepest level. You have to still speak to why it is important for them to do that. So this applies to you too. And you don't have to figure it out yourself if you've been not knowing what to say because um, I can help you. I can help you figure out some words and words that are going to help you to communicate with people that still feel like you. Um, so yeah, so I have a new program. It's called Your Mermaid Treasure VIP to help you to put out what is in your heart and it includes monthly one-on-one -on -one deep dives with me of at least an hour. So you get deep one-on-one -on -one intention to improve your offer and how you share it with people so that they get it. And two hours a month of me writing for you. If you want help with the writing on your website, for your book, for your business, um, you can get more done because you don't have to do it all yourself. And then you also get private boxer support, which is like voicemails twice a week. So you can answer any questions and supports between the other sessions. So that through the week you have support to run your business and write your book. So if you want to be living the good life, doing your passion, getting paid for it, and you've been struggling, send me a DM or contact me on my site and I have a whole range of offerings So for any budget. So I like to try to work with people um, the tier I mentioned is more of a high tier, but I also have some lower ones, so you can definitely um, move towards getting paid to be in your genius and getting support to share it, overcome fears, even if you can't get the VIP going right now, that's okay, we can talk about another option, but those spots are going to open soon, so if you are interested, let me know, and you can be like first in line. So yeah, so... That's what's coming out for me, and I'm just following my intuition, putting it out there bit by bit and showing up, and it is scary. I'm not saying this fear ever goes away. It's not about that for me. It's just about connecting to my intuition with, like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Why am I here? And honestly, I'm just trying to avoid those dark moments of feeling lost, and if I just stay trying to listen to my intuition and doing what I was here to do... 
I know I'm not going to get too off track. I know that whatever I learn is going to arise. I'm going to learn through experience. I'm going to learn by doing stuff. And I'm stronger than the fear. So I <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kristen. And great spontaneous live. Thank you so much. And um, thanks you guys for, for watching. I look forward to doing more lives. If you have any ideas for something you'd like me to talk about, please leave me a note. And you can check out my other video on sharing your stuff, which I just put on YouTube and it's on Facebook on my profile as well. So you guys have a great day. Big hugs to you. So much love.